had Moses for their deliverer. And in our days, we had Julia Bielski. The survivors would often refer to Tubia as their modern-day Moses. You know, one from, uh, from history thus far has ever put two and two together that they actually cross a sea of reeds. We're all very familiar with the Exodus story of Moses and how God called Moses uh, to be able to deliver his people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt. The journey actually takes them to a place uh, that Moses called the Red Sea, or actually in the Hebrew language, he called it Yamsu. What is Moses saying by using the word Yamsu? Uh, he's implying that it's a sea full of reeds. Because of the terminology that Moses uses for the Red Sea, there, there is constant debates of where did the children of Israel cross? We know that Ron Wyatt was the first one to supposedly discover a chariot wheel on the bottom. Leonard Muller also uh, did a lot of uh, footage, uh, underwater footage with a robotic arm, uh, looking at the seafloor. Muller's conclusion is that uh, coral could not grow on sand. It has to have a host to grow on. And it is unusual uh, from any other uh, site in the, in the region there because what happens there is most of the coral mass is such as the as, as a, uh, Sinai Peninsula. It's more typical of a coral reef. But when you look at the Nuevo Beach uh, crossing there, it's almost like a junkyard. Coral is just scattered in pieces all across the bottom going across a nine-mile stretch. They don't understand why, why is the coral formations like this. Truly, the Bible says that the children of Israel went through the Red Sea. It was on dry ground, and the water was a wall to the right and to the left. There's never been any plausible explanation for the word suf. I said it's a Hebrew term. I said it, it means reeds. Why would Moses call a place that was either reedless, a sea of reeds, or was it reeds at one time, or was there a mistake in the translation? It's very clear in the Jewish commentators, especially Rashi, the main Torah commentator, the phrase, Az Yashir Moshe, then Moses began to sing. When Moses sang after the destruction of the Egyptian army and Pharaoh into the Sea of Reeds, he was not just singing for the redemption of the Jews at that time, but as the Midrash states, and as Rashi points out, he was singing as well for a future redemption. Well, the war breaks out in 1941. The Germans invade the country of Belarus. Belarus is kind of like a hub. Their basic goal is to get to Moscow. So they're using Belarus as their easiest route to get there. And of course, in the process of doing that, they want to annihilate as many Jews as they can while they're there. The Belsky family, of whom we saw in the movie Defiance, they're the ones who fought and survived. are coming. God will not part these waters. We will do it ourselves. No. Not by miracles. We will do it together by our strength. As soon as I saw it, I jumped up and I hit pause on the TV and I looked at my wife. I said, that is what Moses is talking about. He had to have been alluding to a future event. Everything in the Bielski story is so reminiscent of the Exodus. Tuvia Belsky and his brother Zeus and Asael rescued around 1,200 Jews from the Nazis uh, and guided them to safe passage uh, through the forest, through water, through all, all sorts of difficult trials. The survivors would often refer to Tuvia as their modern day Moses. He takes on a nature totally different from his brothers in that he wants to rescue as many of his people as he can hides them into the woods, and just like the children of Israel, they keep moving about. It is also, though, historically and biblically true, and the idea of Jews forced to wander without a home from one place to the other in the wilderness, in the desert, in search of a home, is Old Testament. It's very difficult to juxtapose biblical 
theology onto modern day scenarios. The reason this is so intriguing, we're following threads that may not have been followed by looking at the backside and realizing that the whole thing is literally designed. Ironically, no one, even from the movie, no one from, uh, from history thus far has ever put two and two together that they actually cross a sea of reeds. It does make one think that something special, something unique, something perhaps divine is happening.